Hi guys and welcome to the next episode. Today we're going to get to more juicy stuff. Yep. Today we're going to talk about jogging the robot and the robot coordinate systems. So... You heard that? I have no clue what was that. Anyway, forget it. So, the juicy stuff. Robot coordinate systems and we're going to have some fun today, I was thinking at least that we're going to start with the safety, looks like. So let's get to it. Oh, you guys hear this every time, at every plant, every customer site, wherever you go to work, safety, 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 safety. But let me tell you that there is a reason for that. Uh, and before we get to the boring stuff, let me tell you a uh, few stories uh, that I, I mean, a uh, friend of mine who had a friend and his friend told him and then they told me, no, that's not true. So let me tell you a few stories that happened to me. So uh, the first one is connected with bypassing the safety. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So, usually at the beginning of the uh, construction, there is a time where we do bypass the safety because we have to. Because there is not enough safety equipment mounted or it didn't come or like always the PLC guys didn't make it. But don't tell them. And that was that time where we were missing, I think, one fence. fence uh, door. So uh, we asked the PLC guys, hey guys, can you make a bypass because we need to run, we need to run T2, we need to run auto and it's pretty annoying because the customer is requesting more and more parts. So they did. Okay, and that was fine. We were running and we were running for about two or three days already and um, yeah, we were running the next day, the other day, and what happened was um, the robot was welding and he went for the cap change. And it stopped. So what I did, I opened the door, I put my log on, I did put my log on, I went inside, I took a look and it turns out that the robot was maybe one millimeter away from the uh, sensor. So he changed the cap, he went to the cap change sensor, but it didn't pick that the cap was there. So I just pushed the post a little bit. So I made the signal. And as soon as I made it, the robot just flew back home, like full speed. Luckily, it was the other way that I was standing. Because there was a pretty high chance I would not be telling you this story today. So yeah, that was bypassing the safety. I did follow the procedures. I put my log on. I, well, I didn't take a look at the teach pendant and that was the mistake because if I would have checked it, I would have seen that there is no error at the, at the robot at all. That there is no fence open. There is no indicator saying that the safety circuit is open. And that would trigger idea that something was not okay, but I didn't do it. Well, that was a bad luck, but nothing happened. And that's why I want to talk about safety a little bit, at least like tiny bit. Guys, I'm not doing this for like one year. I'm doing that for like seven years that I'm talking about programming. So that didn't happen to me when I was like first days at work. It happened after like four years I've been doing that job so each of you can forget about it each of you can make a small mistake that might lead into a big shit yes yeah, so that was the bypassing stuff uh, the other thing is was actually a little bit more mm, scary I would say or it stick in my mind more. So we were uh, 
in the body shop, we're doing the geo fixture, we're doing the cycle time optimization. That we do on during the weekend and during the week we run in the production. Bang, there is a, a problem with the robot. The, he was going to some tight, tight place. He ripped off the hoses. So the water is everywhere and long story short, basically we need to go in to fix it. So we fi we're fixing it, we refix it and we're checking. I'm taking one robot, a friend of mine is taking the other one. And the third fr friend is looking at everything from the back to make sure everything is fine. So we're going through the stuff, we're going through the path, checking it. And suddenly I hear scream, like guys, scream. And I take a look at my friend and he's just shaking like this. I didn't know like what happened at the beginning and he just screamed, drive it back, drive it back. And then I realized that his leg was freaking smashed between the pillar and the robot. So what he was doing, he was taking a look at the TCP at the end of the welding gun. If it's not scratching anything and the hoses that are not, you know, trying to rip something or they are not pushed against something, but he forgets that the gun is like that long. So he wasn't looking at the wrist of the robot and that would hit him because he was looking, programming, programming and and that was guys T1. We, do, we weren't doing like T2 or anything. We were not in a rush. We were just driving the, the programs and it took him one second. That was enough to smash that. That's the picture. That's how his leg looked like after like two hours. So keep in mind, keep that in mind because that job is taking some risk with it. And going back to the story, the friend that was telling me standing behind us was actually closer to the guy. So he grabbed the pendant. He did shift backward. We were on Fanuk, so he did shift backward to move the robot back. And the guy walked away. Uh, he walked out, we called the ambulance and many, many, many problems. So yeah, that was the other story. And well, I do have more. If you want to hear them, just hit the like button, subscribe. Let me know down in the comments. So I'm going to tell you more uh, why you shouldn't do stuff that you think doesn't matter. So going back to the safety. Guys, T1 is enough. Trust me, T1 is enough. Okay, if you are having really, really old robots, I work with like from the Fanuc RJ2 or RJ3, yes, the approximation is different in T1 and T2, big time. Uh, but nowadays, not so much. Trust me, it's enough to check it in T1 and it should work in T2. Anyway, you smash it in T2, it's just the robot, it's just the fixture, it's just whatever. It's better to smash the fixture than smash yourself. Because most likely the robot is going to stop on the fixture when it hits it. It will not stop after it hits you. So keep that in mind. See this. So yeah, no, it, it won't even hit in the collision detect. You just so the bones are too soft for it. Just bang and you're gone. So yes, T1 is enough. Second thing, follow the lockout procedures. Yeah, look, I, as you can set, tell with the bypass stuff, that didn't go so well for me, but put on the lock, make sure that the lights are off, make sure that the robots are off. That's what I didn't do and that would get me into the trouble. So take a look at the uh, door. Take a look at the lock, that it's locked. Make sure that the lights are on, that there is an arrow, door open, whatever indicator you have for that. Take a look at the robot again to make sure that it has the fans open signal or safety circuit open or whatever else is indicating the, the open. Then you can go inside and make your stuff. Uh, third thing, always take a look at the whole robot. Yep, don't take a look at the piece you're working with or the end of the arm tooling only. Robot is big, well, small, big, doesn't matter. Just take a look at the whole thing, the dress pack that you're not ripping it off. 
that everything is fine and you can jog it because uh, again it's easy to damage yourself or get hurt so going farther uh, do not work alone please what i mean is always to make sure that all of this is at the factory at the customer place whatever because like the friend i told you about if nobody was there he had dependent he could move back but he couldn't the adrenaline the stress he was the guy like if you would have seen it the guy was only like shaking his hands and he was shaking he was not able to push the button he was not able to, to push the dead man into the correct position because of the stress so if there was nobody at the plant at that time most likely he would have uh, lost his leg because the blood circulation was not okay and he would have been there for that long as somebody didn't come to the factory and wouldn't see him either screaming or just being pushed against the uh, fixture so do not work alone try to get to have somebody working somewhere close somewhere close to you or just to somebody to be at the site so it can find you if the robot will hit you or oh my god hope not but if something happens make sure that there will be somebody to help you it's really 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 important and guys remember to always think about everything about the surroundings why well the other story that happened to me is i grabbed the teach pendant because the robots were not moving so i take a look yeah, there was a fold i rested the fold and i tried to move the robot back to home but i'm moving the robot with the teach pendant but the robot is not moving so i'm putting up the speeds higher i'm moving the robot but the robot is not moving so i go full speed I move the robot, the robot is not moving, but there is a collision detect. I'm like, what the hell? So there were like six or seven robot controllers, uh, and I apparently was not moving the correct one. So if you're moving the robot, but the robot is, is not moving, maybe you're not moving the correct robot. That happened also. Well, nothing major, just a few pipes bent. It was okay, mechanic guys fix it in maybe like 20 minutes but yes somebody could have been inside for example and then what so safety is important regardless if you're doing this for 10 20 one year doesn't matter always what matters is here guys because nobody's going to think instead of you you're the one controlling the robot you're the one going inside the cell so think about your safety okay and that's it for now uh, if you liked it please don't forget to subscribe hit the like button and see you in the next movie bye